This is WFYI News Now. It's January 19th, and I'm Darian Benson. On today's show, opponents to a bill moving through the State House say it could kill Indy's proposed blue line. A Democrat launches her campaign for attorney general. And tensions on U.S. college campuses have been rising since the Israel Hamas war started. An Indiana university has made decisions that sparked concern about free speech. I went to a faculty council meeting this week. Normally these are so boring. There's 10 people show up. Um, But this week, I think they were probably pushing like 70 people. Those stories coming up. But first, 2023 legislation that allowed Indianapolis to set up a downtown fee on taxable properties is at risk of repeal. Jill Sheridan has more on the fate of the Miles Square Economic Enhancement District after the Ways and Means Committee heard hours of testimony this week. The Economic Enhancement District could provide $5.5 million a year towards public safety, beautification, and homelessness initiatives. Republican Julie McGuire authored the bill to repeal the district. She says her concerns were driven by rising costs for property owners, a lack of transparency, and the timing. This funding was so important, why didn't the mayor or the city county councilors campaign on the creation of this taxing district? IMPD Interim Chief Chris Bailey says without the Economic District, additional police support and homeless outreach in the area will be difficult to maintain. And I cannot guarantee that the level of engagement in just this one Indianapolis neighborhood can continue without these additional funds. The measure will receive amendments and may get a vote next week. I'm Jill Sheridan. A state Senate committee voted yesterday to approve a bill that prohibits dedicated lanes for public transportation. As Ben Thorpe reports, those opposed to the bill say it could kill Indianapolis's proposed Blue Line bus rapid transit system. In over two hours of testimony, many business owners along the planned Blue Line raised concerns that it would hurt their businesses. Republican Senator Aaron Freeman has authored similar bills in previous sessions. But the citizens of Indianapolis do not deserve dedicated lanes that are going to so screw up their travel that it's going to almost force people to ride a bus in Indianapolis. Democratic State Senator Fatty Kadora called the bill bad public policy. This is bad government interfering with local government doing what is best for its citizens. The bill would not impact existing dedicated lanes, but would block any future lanes, not just in Indianapolis, but statewide. I'm Ben Thorpe. Former Marion County Clerk Beth White says Indiana deserves an attorney general who is serious about their responsibilities. And she says current AG Todd Rokita has created distractions that have hurt, not helped Hoosiers. As Brandon Smith reports, White, a Democrat, launched a campaign for attorney general yesterday. White currently serves as the head of the Indiana Coalition to End Sexual Assault and Human Trafficking. She's also worked as an attorney for the State Department of Child Services and the Marion County Prosecutor's Office. I want to get back to the business that the attorney general is supposed to be doing, protecting consumers, making sure that the legal environment is solid in the state of Indiana, protecting uh, seniors in particular from Medicare fraud and other kinds of abuse. White has run for statewide office before, losing the 2014 race for Secretary of State. She says to win, she needs to show Hoosiers a contrast, highlighting Rokita's legal fights with abortion care providers. Doctors are afraid because the environment that's been created is creating fear, and it's unacceptable. White joins Destiny Wells in the race for the Democratic nomination. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Brandon Smith at the State House. And for our final story today, tensions on U.S. college campuses have been rising since the Israel-Hamas war started, and polls show an uptick in reported incidents of anti-Semitism. Congressman Jim Banks sent a letter to Indiana University saying it must stand firmer against anti-Semitism and threatened the school could lose federal funding. In the weeks and months that followed, the school made decisions that sparked concern about free speech. To learn more about this unfolding story, I recently spoke with a reporter who covers it in Bloomington, WFIU's higher education reporter Aubrey Wright. I started by asking Wright about an IU professor suspended last month. Tenured political science professor Abdul Qadar Sano was suspended. Aubrey, can you explain what happened? Basically, in Jim Bake's letter, he said that he heard about pro Palestinian protests on campus and then accusations of anti Semitism in IU student government. And he was basically told IU, curb this or you're going to be in trouble. So Professor Sino, he's the advisor of the Palestine Solidarity Committee. They hold a large event on campus without an approved room request. Um, 
And, you know, holding an unapproved event is not totally unheard of, but what is unusual, uh, faculty say, is that Sino was suspended for two semesters, um, and this is pretty severe. And I've talked to faculty, and they say that he was supposed to have a hearing in front of an elected committee of his peers, and that didn't happen. One of the people I talked to was Professor Jeffrey C. Isaac. He weighed in on Sinnoh's suspension and faculty's response. There needs to be a a cessation of these kinds of political interferences in campuses and efforts to quash speech. They think the administration sidestepped campus policy to punish Sinnoh after this kind of political pressure from Jim Banks. And then about a month later, IU canceled a major art exhibit by Samia Halaby, who is widely regarded as one of the most important living Palestinian artists. Why was it canceled? Uh, It's still pretty unclear. You know, IU cited security concerns, um, but they haven't been super transparent. They haven't elaborated on what those concerns could be or if any threats were made to the art or campus. Provost Rahul Shrivastav explained some of his reasoning in a faculty meeting, and he basically said that the show would have been a lightning rod for protests in the middle of campus. I talked with Madison Gordon. She's Halaby's niece and collaborator. She says that uh, Halaby is one of Palestine's foremost artists, very politically active, And she thinks that IU felt the need to distance itself from Halaby. In the two-sentence letter to us, they said there were security concerns. But I have received absolutely no evidence that that's the case. And can you talk a little bit about what reaction has been like on campus? Yeah, it's tense. I will give you an example. I went to a faculty council meeting this week. Normally, these are so boring. There's 10 people show up. Um, But this week, I think there were... We're probably pushing like 70 people. They were there listening. They were there protesting. But I think that faculty and very many students are losing their faith, losing their respect for the administration and this kind of constant excuse of security concerns. Now, this is all happening as part of a large discussion and debate around Israel's war in Gaza. And it seems Indiana lawmakers have also weighed in with a new bill. Basically, the bill defines and bans anti-Semitism. Indiana already bans religious discrimination in general, but this is a little bit more specific. Jewish students for a long time have been saying that they don't feel safe on campus in Indiana schools and that bills like this were created before the war. But um, a lot of the controversy now is if pro-Palestinian or, like, anti-Zionist speech can be considered anti-Semitic. And, you know, lawmakers, you know, Jim Banks thinks so. Many families and students agree. So uh, I can see this bill moving forward, but we'll see. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you. IU has provided a statement about the professor's suspension. It said, quote, the school carefully follows its policies and procedures and is fully committed to free speech and academic freedom, end quote. And yesterday, the Indiana House unanimously passed a bill that would define and ban anti-Semitism in public education institutions. The bill now moves to the Senate. That's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. Our podcast is produced by the following people who live in your community. Aubriana Heron, Drew Dodlin, Kendall Antron, who composed the music for this podcast, and me, Darian Benson. Our news director is Sarah Neal Estes. If you liked today's episode, remember to subscribe and share. And follow WFYI on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to check in on our newsroom throughout the day. Thanks for listening. We'll be back Monday.